Well, good evening and welcome to Tucker Carlson tonight. So the left has finally found the only immigrant in history who had no right to come to America. The only one who didn't improve the place by his presence. His name, Christopher Columbus. His crime, violating the sovereignty of the people who lived here already. Plus, he was the wrong ethnicity. Now, try making that argument about any other immigrant to America and see how long you keep your job. But whatever. Happy Columbus Day anyway. Enjoy it while you can. Your grandchildren won't even know it existed. Progressives had declared war on Christopher Columbus, as they have on most things older than last week. This is year zero on the revolutionary calendar. History starts now. Ignorance of the past isn't simply tolerated, it's required. Does your average protester know anything about Christopher Columbus? That he's celebrated as a hero throughout much of Latin America, for example? Of course not. The left speaks only of Columbus's genocide, mostly because his ships brought old world diseases to the new world. Of course, those ships returned to Europe with syphilis and tobacco, which proves only that real history is more complicated than the childish theology your kids are now learning in school. Now, you could make those arguments to liberals if you wanted to, but save your breath. They don't care, because none of this is really about Christopher Columbus. What we're watching is a full-scale assault from within on the West itself, its history, its political and intellectual legacy. It's not a debate where one side tries to convince the other. It's a war, with one side trying to erase all remnants of its opponent, in this case, Western civilization. Consider what happened recently at a sleepy academic journal called Third World Quarterly. Professor Bruce Gilley of Portland State University published a paper there entitled The Case for Colonialism. Professor Gilley argued that Western colonization of the world, while flawed, obviously, was, quote, objectively beneficial. He noted that countries that have embraced Western institutions left behind by the colonial powers have succeeded, while countries dominated by anti-colonial ideologies have not succeeded, to put it mildly. Now, you might agree with his thesis or you might disagree, but in this current moment of revolutionary fervor, you're not even allowed to have thoughts like that. Gilly's paper has since been pulled after half the publication's board resigned in protest of it. Keep in mind, nobody alleged plagiarism here or inaccuracy. They just didn't like the conclusion, so they silenced the person who wrote it. Reason, tolerance, free inquiry, those are Western civilization's central gifts to this world. It shouldn't surprise us that in places where the West is under attack, those very principles are under attack too. So when they come for the Columbus statue in your town, it's worth fighting back because it's not about the statue. It's about something much deeper. Jason Nichols is a professor at the University of Maryland, and he joins us tonight. Professor, thanks a lot for coming on. Thank you, Tucker. Good to see you again. Good to see you. So people are upset about Columbus. Here's the lens through which I view this. Here you have an immigrant from a Spanish-speaking country coming to this continent for a better life, and you're saying he's not welcome here. That sounds like bigotry to me. So, Tucker, let me uh, adjust your lens a little bit. We have a person coming from outside of our borders, coming and terrorizing and killing 200,000, 250,000 American citizens in two years. We'd probably call that person a terrorist, correct? Those are the people that we don't want in our country. Those are the bad immigrants. Those are who we vet and try to keep out. Okay. Well, I, I hate to give a history lesson to a professor, but Columbus did not kill uh, 200,000 uh, people. Oh, no. What you're, oh, refer what you're referring did. to, what you're referring to were the viruses that Columbus and oh, his no, crew no, no, in no, subsequent, no. no, in subsequent waves of explorers and immigrants from Europe brought to the New World that decimated the native population, which is obviously a tragedy, Tucker, but it's very I'm, I'm different. Also... From what Tucker, I'm legend. also talking about European brutality. Also, yeah. he laid the, the map basically for the, sl the transatlantic slave trade. He was the first person to take captives across the Atlantic. Yeah. So, again, he, he was part of, uh, you know, things that I think as Americans we don't stand for. Well, I, don't I think stand, that's, I mean, I think hopefully. that's right. I mean, you're, you're aware, I mean, not to get into, get into the history of it, but that slavery was pre-existing in the Americas. The, the native population here practiced slavery, as I'm sure you know. I, so I, it's I, my, saw, my only point. To look, the my, transatlantic. Look, I'm not okay. even here to, I'm not defending Columbus. I, I don't need to. Okay. He's not a relative of mine. He's been dead for 500 years. I just want to make two points. One, that history is a lot more complex than the theologians who are mishandling it in our current age will admit. 
It's very complicated stuff. People are complicated. And second, this is not really about Columbus. It's about attacking Western civilization, European influence on the Americas. And before you do that, you should think through the implications of it, don't you think? So, I, again, I, I view it very differently. I, I think that um, this is about uh, people like Columbus. I mean, we don't go and talk about people who killed 200,000 people through whatever means and enslave people. Columbus, on one occasion, actually, for a man who stole corn, he cut off his ears and nose and sold yeah. him into slavery. Is that it's the awful. kind of brutality that, that we represent? I, I really no. don't think so. No, it's, it's, and, it's not. And, and, but, but, but hold on. I think you'll concede that in 15th century North America, as in 15th century Europe, brutality was universal, and it's appalling. And I, and I, I would never defend any of it. Thank God I don't have to. But to pretend that he was the only one committing it is ahistorical and wrong. And I think as a professor, you would acknowledge that. So let's just put it in, oh. as you would say, as a guy on the left, into some context here. Fair? <laughs> well, listen, now, I'm, I'm not saying he's the only person committing violence. That would be like saying o Osama bin Laden is the only terrorist. Right. We That's actually right. have uh, many, many people who have committed you know, atrocities throughout history. But I think, you know, when we talk about historical context, one thing never changes. Killing massive amounts of people, facilitating the, the rape and murder of lots of people is uh -huh. never acceptable. We don't ever talk about Hitler in, in positive terms or, or Leopold or any of these people who are, or Stalin who, who have killed right. numerous people. And, and, uh, but it's not really about Colum things. it's not about Columbus, an Italian who is acting on behalf of the Spanish government. Again, I, I've got nothing in common with him. I don't have to defend him. But the subsequent mm -hmm. waves of Europeans who came to this country obviously hurt a lot of the indigenous population, but also had a pretty great effect on the continent. I mean, they turned it into America, which to this day is a beacon of hope for the world. That's why everyone wants to come here. So you're trying to delegitimize that. And let's let's be honest no, about I, that. I, I, Again, I disagree. First of all, when we're talking about the mainland of the United States, uh, Columbus never made it here. So when right. we're talking about people who came, the Europeans who came to Ellis Island and, and other places, uh, I think that th that influence, we, we can say, for the most part, has been positive, though they've done, you know, some good things, some bad things. I don't think there's any American who, who would sit here and say, oh, we shouldn't have any Europeans here in the United States. But when they come and, and <laughs> Oh, I think there probably are brutality. people on this very show who would say that, but thank God you're not one of them. Really quick, I'm, I'm baffled by this. So this, this Indigenous Peoples Day, I'm totally for Indigenous Peoples, though, of course, no one's really Indigenous. They came here across the land bridge like everybody else. However, I'm not against that. I'm just wondering, no, we're all immigrants, including the American Indians, as you know. But my question to you is, all these people are suddenly in love with the native population of America. I don't see them sending any money to the Pine Ridge Indian Reservation in South Dakota, which is basically the poorest place on the continent. Why is that? It's all kind of theoretical and all these symbolic gestures of support, but like no actual support. Have you noticed that? So I, I think that there's more than many of us can do to help our communities. Um, I think that the debt really to the, to the indigenous people is owed by the United States government. They're the people who owe the, the, uh, well, the indigenous people. Well, they've spent a lot. They, they've spent an They're awful lot. It hasn't who, helped. But, but, but hold on. Why, well, why, why are you again, offloading the responsibility to the government? You're calling for Indigenous Peoples Day. I'm not offloading. Why don't you send well, a, a check for ten grand to indigenous peoples? I bet they'd appreciate it. I know they would, in fact, <laughs> having spoken to them. Well, maybe if you give me your job, I'll have that ten grand. But I'll tell you what. The, it, it's not the average American that removed indigenous people from their homes during the Trail of Tears. That was the United States government and actually somebody who President Trump praised. Those, those are the acts of, of the government who right. owes the indigenous well, people. Let me, let me ask you really quick. Are you aware that the, in, and I think the Trail of Tears is appalling and I'm not defending it, obviously. One of the many bad things our government has done. But are you aware that the Indians mm -hmm. brought their slaves with them on the Trail of Tears? Did you know that? I, I am aware. I'm absolutely aware. Just because history's yes. complicated, that's the only point I'm making. Professor, thank you for joining us. I appreciate it. Thank you so much, Tucker.